What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're taking a look at Foundation. Foundation is a game where you're going to build up a kingdom on behalf of the king, the crown, and also the church. And you're going to have ever-expanding territory as you get bigger and larger and everything else. Kind of a cool little city management game. So if you're into things like City Skylines or anything else, you might enjoy it. It's a little bit more lightweight than like City Skylines and things like that, but there's not a whole lot of like... There's not a lot of medieval civilization builders out there, and so that's what's got me excited. You guys know that I love a good city builder. So anyways, let's dive straight on into a new game before we go too long. We've got our balancing, we've got different maps. We can go hills, coastal, fluvial, mountain, valley. Um, I've done coastal like every single time I've played this game, so I'm gonna go with valley. We'll see what happens in the valley. So here we are, in the valley. Oh, look at that. There's, like, rivers running through it and stuff like that. Okay. As far as I can tell, these maps are, like, genned the same, like, every single time. I don't know. I've played... So, the thing is, I've played the coastal map, like, a lot. And it seems to me that the coastal map is always the same. But I would verify with somebody who's played the game a lot more than I have before you, you know, come out and say that loudly. Uh, we've got a nice little spot right here, actually. I kind of like this little area. Uh, I don't see anything else around. Like, when it comes to going up the mountain, I don't think the camera wants to do it. And so, I don't even think we can go up that way. We've actually, that's kind of a, not a great parcel. I'm not, the, like, there's a lot of things around here that are going to be unusable land. And at the beginning of the game, you kind of want to have, like, maximum usable area. Because you got to earn some money to buy another slot next to it. And this one has a nice little expansion zone, like, right next to it. And this area, kind of sketchy. But I think if we build a bridge this way... We should be able to take care of business on that side. Yeah, let's do it right here. We'll go right here. This is fine. All right, so we've got to build our village center. Village center is going to be pretty much where you expect it to be, like right there. And now we have all of our little villagers. First thing we're going to need is a lumber camp. The second thing we're going to need is a gatherer's hut. So there we go. We've got those two things all set up, one to gather berries and one to chop down the vuda. And so let's go to our population list, and we need to assign some jobs. So Willibald. We can actually do this an easier way, too, except that that's not set up already. So we're going to put in a builder and a builder. So there we go. We got two builders. They're going to get to work momentarily, just slapping down all the things that they need to do on this side. At the beginning of our village, we started out with 400 gold. We've got 40 wood. We've got 20 tools, 15 tools now, because they're going to put those into the lumber place and then we've also got the amount of berries that we have stored up unfortunately we have no way to distribute this food if you take a look at each of your individuals you'll see they have needs down here later on the game's going to tell you to upgrade them from serfs to commoners and from commoners to like townies and all that kind of stuff in order to do that it works basically like the anno games you've got to have a certain number of things otherwise they won't upgrade so these guys want water and they want food and then that'll upgrade their happiness to the next level. Once they get to the next level, they'll add like two or three more desires. Like they'll want to go to church or they'll want to have a house. And if you get those done, eventually they'll stop getting new requirements and they'll just go up to the next level of villager, which will allow them to work in more complicated buildings and stuff like that. This over here, uh, we got our woodcutter. I'm going to assign two people to go cut wood. And we need to actually set up an area that is designated for wood cutting. So we're going to go to this little paintbrush up here and then we're going to create an extraction zone over on this side there we go nice little extraction zone I'm pretty sure you can change the size of this too I forget what the hotkey is yeah there we go we can make it a little bit larger too which is usually a pretty good idea take that over there and now we have that all ready to go but we still have more jobs to assign so let's go ahead and assign a couple people to foraging as well so we got two builders two foragers and two woodcutters not bad we kind of want to, like, resist the urge of using up, like, every single one of our... Sort by job, please. I don't like it when it sorts by arrival. It just makes things messy. I like it when it sorts by job. It makes my life easier for when I'm trying to quantify, like, who's doing what and, like, who's underway, essentially. And as you can see, they'll start clearing trees over here. One thing we are going to need is a well. Unfortunately, I don't know if we have any stone in this area. I don't see any rocks. Oh, no, there's rocks right there. They're in the middle of the woods. There they are. I do wish that, like, there was... Ooh, are those in my area? They are. I was going to say, all the starting areas should have all the things you need to get through Tier 1. I've never seen a starting area that didn't have the objects required to do, like, a Tier 1 build. So, 
I got a little worried when I didn't see rocks, but I had a sneaking suspicion that they were probably just hiding underneath the undergrowth. Oh, we're going to need a stonecutter's camp. If we don't have a stonecutter's camp, we're not going to be able to gather the basic stuff that we need in order to get water, which is going to be our first big objective, because, fun fact, human beings don't tend to do very well in the absence of water. Like, we need that. It's one of those things that's like a biological imperative, so... This will get us to the well, so that we can build a well like right here. One of the features I really love about this game is how as your villagers walk around, they create little paths, and they'll wear it down depending on where they've been most. They'll create like little cobbles basically underfoot, they'll wear it down to the stone. It's pretty nice. I really, really like that feature. It has like a organic feeling to it. Oh, he's not even done over here. He's still like doing his thing. Alright, well, continue building that building over there. Yep, do your thing. Fill up your little meter. Fill it up, guy. I believe in you. Alright, so we'll put a couple of stone cutters out here, too, so that we can start stacking up some extra resources. At the moment, there is a resource menu. I always forget where it's at. There's a resource menu around somewhere where it'll give you a little window with everything you have inside of it. But like I said, I always forget where it's at. Uh, there it is, the resource panel. So I actually kind of want to arrange some of this stuff a little bit more. We'll move this over to here. I like to have windows open when I play this game. Some people do not. I like keeping the windows open because it helps me monitor like everything that's going on. Like if I get extra immigration, I'll notice that we have unemployed people on the list. Whereas I may have not seen the notification in the first place that new people were arriving in our settlement. So for now, we've got 54 wood. We've got some tools. We've got some other stuff going on. And something that's probably a good idea is we should probably set up like... Oh, I can't do residences yet. Never mind. Uh, you can set up residential zones, and they'll just start auto-building houses, but not important right now. Not important. I'm going to try and clear, like, this entire area if I can. I want all these trees gone. Like, every single one of these trees needs to die a horrible tree-like death so that I can have building space. As soon as we get some stone together, we're going to make a well. I think it's fine if the well is, like, right there. These two buildings are going to get destroyed later anyway, so it's not really a big deal that they are where they are. I think berries last forever. I played, like, the first year in preparation for this series just to make sure that I knew what I was doing because I remember this game had, like, a lot of menus and a lot of things in, like, strange places that, like, it took me a minute to find them the last time I played it. So I wanted to be all smoothed over, but uh, I don't think the berry bushes ever go away. I don't think I've ever seen, like, a berry bush despawn in this game. Like, they might, but... I've never witnessed it. Like, I've seen with my long-term plays, like, I still have the same berry gatherers from my first day. Still working on the same berry bush. I don't know. Uh, our well will be done very, very shortly. Oh, cool. He's building it right now. Nice. Meter, fill it on up because I need some water. Yep, go get that water. Perfect. So now what we'll notice is if you click on these guys, they will have water very, very soon. It'll say that we've actually fulfilled their water need. Now, the final thing that we're going to need is a market. So you need some way to distribute food to all of your little newbies, like all of your, you know, new guys, essentially. Um, we can do that through this panel right here. The market is one of the buildings that's basically modular. So, like, a significant proportion of the buildings in this game are modular, which means you can build them out however you want, sort of like Legos. So, like, we pick the parts that we want, and these parts are functional. So, like, these sell different things from our inventories. But if we wanted them just to sell food to the villagers, we would set up like a food table like right here around the village square. And then we would just tell them to start construction. And we can modify that and add more stuff to it later. If it turns out that we want to make this like a sprawling kind of bazaar later on, we can do that. That's totally available to us. But for right now, we'll just build that because I've got to assign probably one of my stone cutters maybe. I don't know when our first round of immigration is going to come through. There is a menu for that somewhere. There it is. So we have immigration in nine days, which is usually two people. Um, once we craft this guy right here, in order to make sure that it actually distributes berries, you got to click on the slot, and then you got to put berries in it. The other thing that I'm going to do is we're going to find one of our stone cutters, and we are going to change their job around to market tender. And so what she's going to do is she'll come over here to this little stall. She'll move the berries from our inventory to the stall, and now villagers will be able to come in and they'll be able to get themselves some food, which will fulfill... Aye, yay, they're serfs now. Huzzah. The kingdom is recognizing your efforts in establishing your settlement. Thank you, my king. I appreciate that. Uh, if you're wondering what those points are, they're splendor, kingdom, and clergy. 
as you get more points, you can unlock other stuff. So, for example, we could unlock, like, the Fisherman's Hut if we really, really wanted to. But we need ten serfs in order to do that. So until everybody upgrades, we're not really going to be able to build that. But it's one thing that I will look into. I'm excited about it. Uh, people are going to want houses now. So as I told you before, when they upgrade, they get new needs. And so their newest need is that they want housing, I think, over here. Yeah, they want housing. And then they also want church services. Church services we're not going to be able to do for a while. They're very, very expensive to set up a church. But for right now, we can set up houses. That's not hard. Now, houses in this game are done in kind of like an odd way. Uh, basically, what you do is you click on the residential planner right here. And then you kind of just go like this. And you paint an area where you're okay with houses being built. And so I would say that, like, I'm okay with most of this area being developed for housing around the central square. We've got other things that we're going to put in the central square, like churches and whatnot. So we won't paint over everything. But what you'll notice is that if there's nothing else going on, our builders will start gathering supplies and they'll build little houses over here. And everybody does need to have a house. That's a pretty big mood penalty if they don't have a house once they become serfs. I don't know what they were before they were serfs. I thought I said they were serfs at the beginning too, but I don't know. Each of these little guys, they're also upgrading their jobs as they work. So it's a good idea for you to leave people on the job that they've had their entire life. That way they get faster and they get better at it. Uh, so there's our first little house being set up. At least he built the door on the right side, so that's good. Second little house is on its way up, too. They will also upgrade these houses all by themselves. So, like, when a villager becomes prosperous enough inside of the village or he needs more space for his family, he will naturally just upgrade the tier of these houses and it doesn't cost you anything. It's just, like, kind of part of how the game functions. Where'd he put his door at? Oh, it's on the back right there? I guess they made, like, a little road right there. I accept that. Like, sometimes they build really, really weird and it just becomes, like, a giant sham glob of housing and then other times they build like intelligently and like neat little rows it's just kind of random every village is different when i play this game so we have immigration in one day that'll allow us a few more options for what we want to get done now we can either start assigning these guys to jobs that already exist or we can save them and keep them in reserve for new buildings as far as new stuff that we can make right now we have a woodcutter, I'm sorry, we've got a stonemason, which basically they cut stone into bricks. We have a warehouse, which is responsible for buying and trading things once we have trade treaties. We have the sawmill, which is responsible for the production of planks and boards. Might be kind of useful. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Let's go ahead and we'll make planks and boards because I think those are going to become like vital for some of the things we're going to be trying to do later on. So I'll probably just put this dude like right here next to the lumber camp. Uh, we are going to get low on tools really soon. And so that's the other part is that in getting planks, that's going to allow us to open up a trade treaty with our neighbor at Davenport. And when we open up a treaty with them, we're going to be able to trade for tools because we don't have the means to produce those yet by ourselves. And we won't have the means to produce those for a while. And so we're going to be quite reliant. They've done that on purpose to kind of force the player to trade in the early game. Two villagers are lacking space right now. That's okay. Didn't I get two new people? I thought I got two new people. There they are. I was going to say they're not on my list yet, but like I know I got two new people. The splendor of your village has unlocked a new tier of unlockables. Nice. I'll probably do the fisherman's hut. We can do a wooden keep. We can do stone walls, wooden walls. I'm not really going to stress about walls right now. Like, I've played the game a bit, and I haven't been attacked yet. Like, I played for about an hour and a half last night to prepare for this series, and I didn't get attacked during that entire time, so I don't know, like, when the attacks occur and when you're going to need walls, or if the walls are purely ornamental and they just add, like, splendor to your city, but I'm not going to stress about it too heavily. Not going to worry about it too heavily. we got two unemployed people. Both of you guys are going to go to the lumber mill, please. And then we got four days till our next round of immigration. Our builders should also start plotting out houses over here in just a minute. But they haven't done it yet. we got people that don't have houses. So once there is a need, I'm pretty sure they'll start doing that. And we also get paid for the berries and the food that people are buying right here. And we've got kind of like a very weird organization thing going on right now when it comes to municipal taxing. Like, we force the villagers to gather the berries, and then we sell the berries back to the villagers for a profit. Don't ask me. I don't know how the system works or why nobody has rebelled yet, but 
They just keep ignoring it and pretending like it's not happening. I don't know. So we need tools. We are going to have to unlock a trade route. As you can see, we're starting to stock up some planks right now. We're going to need to get up to 20 of those before we can open up our first trade route. On top of that, we're also going to need a warehouse before we open up the trade route. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to trade anything anyways. Because you have to have open warehouse slots in order to do trading. So, I'll probably start a warehouse off like... I don't know, like right there. Looks good to me. I got no problem with that. Looks good to me. Uh, did we unlock a free territory, by the way, when we completed that quest? No. But some of the quests will give you free territories. I kind of want to build a bridge over there to go to that side. I don't really want this land over here. It's kind of rough. I also don't know where our copper's at. There should be some copper or some iron around that we can make use of. But I'm just seeing berry bushes for right now. Berry bushes and stone. I can't see underneath all the trees. There's probably like a little thing that folds the terrain or whatever, but I don't know. Well, there you go. There's an iron right there, and there's an iron right there. And that seems to be about it. We're going to have to work our way towards that if we really want it to happen. Warehouse is Dunzo's. Uh, we have two more people that are about to arrive. Walking slowly through the hills towards their life of endangered servitude towards the king. And then we'll add them to the warehouse so that they start moving things around in just a minute. I also wanted to make sure we had enough zones painted. To get like all this wood. Like I absolutely 100% want all this forest knocked down. Before we go too far into the play. Like, I just need building space for my main city center. Alright, so they're not going to build housing over there, but we do have two people that are ready to be warehousers. We also have the planks that we need in order to open up this trade route, so I'm going to do that. Pow. Uh, they are selling tools for 10 gold, and they are selling bread for 10 gold. They're selling fish for 100 gold, which is actually kind of wild. They'll buy berries, they will buy bricks, and they will buy planks. Okay, well, this is how we're going to set this up. So we're going to go to the trade menu, and then we're going to set it up like this. Uh, I'm okay with them selling all above the value of 50. So we want to have always 50 berries kind of reserved for ourselves. But if we have excess of that like we do right now, they'll sell that. Uh, I want them to sell planks. Let's have them sell planks above the value of 25. So if we have more than 25 planks, hopefully they'll sell them off. Uh, we need to buy tools. And so we need to buy inventory until we have 25 tools, sounds about right. Buy inventory until we have 25 tools. And then there's two things you have to do to make this work. you got to set it up in there, and then you need to assign a slot for it inside your warehouse so that there's a place where it can be bought and sold from. And that's for every single item that you have on your trade route. And so now we're selling berries from here. As you can see, they put 24 inside of there because that's the excess that we have over the top of 50. Uh, they put 25 planks in there because we had 50 and so on and so forth. And it should be that easy. Should be that easy. They'll buy 15 tools the next time it comes around, which will cost us about 150 gold. They'll sell off some of our other stuff. So 24 at 3 gold apiece. We'll make like 70 off of berries. And with the planks, we'll make like another 70 off of that. So it'll slightly offset it. Well, it looks like we have more urban sprawl happening over here, which is good. It's kind of waiting for that to occur, so I'm all right with it. I would like to get the Fisher's Hut, but I think we're going to have to... I have 10 serfs, but I don't have the 2 prestige required. Gotcha. Okay. So for now, I'm just waiting on immigration. We should have a few more people coming very, very soon. And the next building that I want to build is going to be a stonemason's. So we're going to take the stonemason. We're just going to plop his ass right there. Now he's going to sit around polishing the stones for us. For the foreseeable future. Until the day that he dies. And then, God. They build like such a fire hazard. Like if there's like the smallest fire, this entire village is going up. But look, at least he's got his poison potion right there. Just in case he needs to do 1d6 plus 2 per turn. Just in case. 
My two unemployed people have arrived, which is great. They're both gonna- Oh, I only have one stone mason. Okay. Well, the other person can be assigned- My lord, we need to choose who we want to help. Uh, let's help... The king? We gotta give 30 berries to the king. Okay. I will assign that other villager to be a gatherer so that our berry supply will continue to go up a little bit faster because our population is growing right now. And we need to get ahead of that. I think a fisher's hut's gonna be very important for us too. If we don't have a fisher's hut, I think we're gonna struggle. So they're going out there to chop down trees. I'll probably leave this right where it's at. I could move it closer to an edge to kind of like force them to chop in the direction that I want them to chop in because they go with the path of least resistance. They'll go wherever it is the nearest tree is when they're trying to gather. But, you know, what do I need? Ulcers? So they've dropped off all the goodies over here. We only have 10 berries inside of there. In order to make this work, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take these off of our... I mean, I guess I could do it like that and they'll bring more of them over, but we got to have 30 berries. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to trade them to the king. How much is this gathering per season? It's a valid question. We may have to put in another gatherer's hut just so we can get more berries. I don't feel like we're ahead of the curve right now when it comes to berries. I feel like we're kind of like struggling in that regard. Either that or the guys that are responsible for moving our stuff around aren't moving it. So we got to have 30 berries inside of our stockpile in order to complete the quest for the king. I think we may need a few more berry gatherers. That's okay because we were going to need that either way. And so in my opinion... It's not that large of a setback. We'll take these two new villagers and we'll assign them to gather berries from this same bush. There's five bushes right there, so there should be enough room for everybody to do their job without tripping over each other's elbows and kicking each other in the duodenum. Our stone cutter is over there, polishing stone. I don't see any stone being polished right now in our inventory. Oh no, we have ten polished stone. Okay, that's cool. We've got ten Polish stones. Hooray. This guy right here, we'll assign our two new villagers. And now we should see our berry supply start to grow. It's important to keep up with your food production because the game will sneak up on you from time to time and you, the next thing you'll know, you'll have like no food because you weren't expanding, you know, your food infrastructure or anything else like that. What I really want is I need splendor. So what kind of stuff can I make that adds splendor? I don't know if the Splendor is, like, universal. So I have ten serfs and five religious Splendor for that to work. Uh, we can build our church. I mean, we get the church core. We kind of, like, put it... Oh, I don't know, like, right there. And then we could take a door. And, like, snap that on right there. Uh, I think the church needs a tower, otherwise it won't work. So there's the bell tower. And then I would say that we just put a couple little extensions in here too. Just so that more people can go to church and we don't have to build another church anytime soon. So there's our first church. It's going to cost us 65 stones, 60 planks, and 25 tools. But I personally think that it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to set them off and let them get their thing done right there. I love the modular building of some of the buildings. It actually allows you to customize things and make them kind of look the way that you want them to look. All right, so our little work camp is growing. That should give us a little bit of splendor when we build this bad boy. It'll give us plus five. And really my goal in doing that is to get to the point where we can start fishing uh, because we need like an alternate food supply, especially since fish are selling for a really good price on this map. I just feel like we need a little bit more. How are we going on them berries right now? Looks like we're ahead of the berry curve at the moment, which pleases me. And as soon as that hits 30, we'll be able to trade it to the king. Or not. 
or, you know, it'll go back down to 24 for some reason. Oh, no, the trader just bought them all. No. I'm going to have to disable it, otherwise we're never going to get the quest done. So don't trade those, but do put them in the stockpile, please. Hopefully. We'll see what happens, but I think our little warehouse porters are kind of busy right now. We'll see where they decide to move things around to, but I haven't seen any berries come inside of here. So, like, if I put no trade on those... Yeah, I guess I can move that over there. Maybe the refuse button is what does it. Maybe I've got it backwards. Maybe the refuse button is what keeps the trader from buying all of our berries. I don't know. All right, two more villagers coming on in. Our city continues to grow. The church is underway, but I got a feeling it's gonna take a really, really long time. Willie, what's going on, man? Are you broken right now? There you go, bud. You're no longer cycling through jobs, freaking the hell out. I have freed you. I have freed you, Willie. Remember who it was that gave you your freedom. Twas the king. I actually think our church may have bugged out. It looks like our church is making people freak the hell out. And so we may have to get rid of it. Uh, let me take a look and we'll just demolish the whole thing so that that frees people from that weird cycle that they're on. I think that this house that they're building in the background is interfering with the construction of the church. I'm not, like, positive, but I think that's what happened is we put in the church right as this house went up. And I think they're, like, clipping or something. And it's made the builders not do what they're supposed to be doing. I'm going to assign a few more builders, too. Just to make sure we always have stuff being constructed while we're in the neighborhood. Uh, we have our woodcutter can go up next, so we'll assign another woodcutter. I will probably assign another forager just to make sure that we have lots and lots of food around. Oh my god, windows everywhere. Windows everywhere! But we're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat, this is Foundation. Hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. We'll try to rebuild the church. Yeah, that's a weird place to put a house, but you know what? I think I'm just going to accept that one at face value. I'm not going to argue about it. If you want to get the game for yourself, it's on Steam now. You can look down below in the description. Hi, do everybody. Take care. I'm out of time. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And bye.